Tim, tell me about the Brickyard Park. How's it going? The Brickyard Park is uh, going very, very well. As you can see, uh, we are almost at the final stages of completion. We, um, we have all the sod down. It is in the, it's in the process of growing in. It's been fertilized. It's been uh, it's rolled in. We still like top dressing. Uh, the fields themselves, but um, drainage and everything. The, the drainage was engineered into the fields uh, to to drain basically from the backstops as the water falls. It falls very gent gently, but it does work well that it drains all the way to the back of the field beyond the fence, and the site itself behind all of the fences is ringed with a uh, with a drainage system, and that drainage system catches all the water, carries it to the uh, tension pond and then carries it off site uh, at an acceptable rate. What uh, can you tell me about the lights? We were talking about the lights. The lights uh, are engineered by uh, Musco and provided by Musco Sports Lighting. The city uses it at Domtar Park from my understanding and uh, each light itself, the clusters that are up on top, have been engineered to ensure that the light goes exactly where it's needed with the hoods and the shields so that you don't have a lot of light spilling away, uh, thereby creating an ineffective uh, lighting of the ball field as well as letting light go somewhere that it should not go. So a lot of time, thought, effort, and engineering went in to make sure that each field is lighted properly and each field can be operated independently. In mm -hmm. other words, when you have a, uh, a, ball a ball game and you only want two fields, that's the, the lights will only be on on two fields. You don't have to energize the entire facility to uh, light up only one or two fields. Let's that, talk about this big field up here. Now, I understand that's not going to be built right now, the field, big, bigger field. Field 5 has been put on subgrade. The drainage is in in the back. There, therefore, it will be able to uh, accommodate any type of water runoff topsoil is going to be placed on top to allow for um, seeding and uh, strawing so that it can uh, have vegetation established on it uh, so this way it doesn't erode or carry dirt off uh, off of the site and in the future it will be developed at some point in time by the city my understanding but mm -hmm. at that time I, I do not know. Uh, how about the field house? The field house itself is uh, yeah, it's a two-story structure. Uh, the top floor is uh, what's called scoring and judging, and uh, it has uh, its four-sided windows so that what, uh, whatever field that is playing, there's a table there with all the available power and data so that uh, the people can sit there comfortably, look out, and uh, score the, score the uh, fields, and they can remotely operate the scoreboards from that location. Uh, the downstairs has, of course, that just a bathroom facility, a little meeting facility, as well as the concession area uh, where everybody will be purchasing their sodas, drinks, hot dogs, popcorn, mm -hmm. whatever that, that might be. Given the history of what Clay Hill used to be, you know, it was, it was Riverview's unofficial playground, but now it's going to be everybody's playground. Official playground. Official playground. The city is opening this up to a lot of tournaments. In my understanding, it's going to generate a, a good amount of revenue for the city of Kingsport. Uh, so, yes, it's, it's going to be a premier facility for uh, Kingsport area. And it, it is going to invite a lot of people to come in and take, take advantage of the opportunities that are presented here in Kingsport. And then, too, uh, it, it lends itself to the history of the area because these are called the Clay Hill Ball Fields. Clay Hill Ball Fields. Good. That's good. I'm, I'm glad that they were able to incorporate the historical uh, aspect of this uh, site with the present uh, 